Tyler Roberts, uh, State Architect. Chris Byerly, Office of State Architect. Lisa Odom, Commissioner. Barbie Morley, EPA. Keith King, Tennessee Board of Regents. Bill Lakes, MPSU. Carl Matka, PTA. Bill Rasmus, GTSU. Andy Harper, MPSU. Rich West, MPSU. Kimberly Petrie, Austin Peay. Mark Bruner, Austin Peay. Philip Zog, Austin Peay. Excellent. Okay, that's our uh, folks who are here in the room. How about the folks from Lawless? Uh, MPSU's online. Jennifer Nelson, TSU. chapter chapter and that's where you all put campus specific information. We provided um, a template document document that um, if you turn to the owner's information it has uh, defines you as the state procurement agency and this allowed us to have a standard chapter one and it allows us to put you to put this own stamp on the designer's manual and having owner's information. There's nothing sacred probably about the contents. Um, this is the template. And particularly, in, in, uh, we had one comment about the team roles. We just picked some that we 
had in your previous designer's manual, and uh, you put the, the team roles and the titles that work for, for your organization, for your SBA, put them in there. Um, so you can see the kinds of things that we're going to put in there, contact information, staff contact information, team roles, campus specific payment processes. That's special information we want to share with designers like how we do deliveries, how you do parking, traffic, coordination with uh, local utilities, and campus utilities, plan rooms, whatever you need to put in there. Try not to duplicate what is in the designer's manual. There's no need to do that, and that might cause confusion. So the chapters are sequenced just like uh, a project, you know, uh, introduction. First, we get a designer under contract. We have designer agreement payments. We have design. Then we get in more detailed design. You have the project manual guide. That's chapter four. Procurement process, chapter five. Chapter six is the longest chapter because that's the longest duration of the project, isn't it? The construction process. And chapter 7 is close out breaking documents. Then we structured the uh, appendices in the three parts, three appendices, appendices, and these by the forms and the standard bidding of construction documents, that's your front ends or your 0001. And there are a few documents that are beyond 01. There's, the 0, there's some 07s and some, uh, I think there's some 23s in there, but there are a few. And this appendix three is where you can have your own that are specific for campus specific guidelines and requirements. So appendix three is another opportunity to design your own uh, attachments. Attachments and put them in the document. Now the goal is to put have this posted on your own website. And so that the folder that uh, Patty shared with you cloud-based folder, those are ready to post. You can start building your website anytime now if you haven't already done so. So chapter one. I just tried to highlight in yellow some things that I thought needed particular notation. Uh, I've got Two files, PowerPoint files of about 25 slides each. It'll take us anywhere from uh, 10 minutes to uh, two hours, <laughs> depending on how much much. Any questions so far? Questions so far? How many of you have uh, been a part of managing projects uh, for over two years using this process? Most everybody. So. Most everybody's done this, been through this, uh, it's nothing new. I think the only thing that may be helpful to say that we by and large we use the TBR documents to guide us and then the UT's uh, designers manual, which was different in some areas, we examined it and said, okay, is there something said better here? And then we tried to also out of the chapters we tried to take out things that could be the form, like an agenda, meeting agenda, or you know, particularly the meeting agenda. Okay? State as owner, I think that's an important uh, section 1.04 on page 1 of, of chapter 1. It says, in B, the owner is the state of Tennessee operating through the state procurement agency identified as the SBC 6 standard form of agreement with owner design. So that establishes you, your campus, the LGI, as the owner. On page uh, three of the chapter one, 1.07 1 is an overview flow chart. That's a very high level uh, chart, and it also uh, helps you picture the design process and construction process when the state building. Commission gets involved, when the owner gets involved. It's not physically detailed, it gives you an overview. That's really how the uh, process goes in 
and guide you through the manual as well. Oops, I'm sorry. The, uh, we added a section that you haven't seen before, maybe with the previous designers' manuals, called electronic signatures and counterparts. It says, at the owner's discretion, documents and forms referred to in the designers' manual and required signatures may be executed by electronic means. How many, how many of you have bought a house and you didn't have to show up for signing documents? You know, so uh, this kind of brings us, gives us the opportunity to bring us into this era that we live in where you can do everything on the phone, my house on the phone, right? So that uh, gives you the latitude to establish that. You may want to comment on that in a pre design conference. And uh, maybe you want to get some I think it was interesting to know. Chapter 2 um, has a standard forms of agreement. And what we try to do throughout this is give you an example from 6.01. Give you an example of what we try to do throughout this manual is to not uh, repeat things that are on other agencies or other state entities websites. And we try not to create links that are hot links in the document. Hot links tend to get broken too easily over you know one year, two years, ten years. And so you can see in two point oh one we just say the owner uses the following standard forms of agreement between the owner and designer under the authority of the State Building Commission. The forms are available on the website of the Office of the State Architect. And then list the forms. So the, those forms are not in part of this designer's manual. They're available for reference. They are a governing document. And then uh, gives you information in chapter two about the standard form of agreement between the owner and the designer, and how to develop that. Every step that you go through throughout the project process. You know, it's just good to review the designer's manual and what it says about it. And I encourage you to do that. This is a single sided copy of the whole thing. It's thick. It's thick. That's a lot to it. But thankfully, you don't enter every part of the project all the time. Also, uh, there's information there on, on uh, developing a supplement to a designer's agreement, Chapter 2. And in the, the last part, I guess it's about the last half chapter, actually, the sample invoice form, starting on page five. And these aren't forms, um, but gives you an example and it does the math on, on various basic services compensated by a lump sum fee is a basic service. Compensated by multiple direct expense, expense of max of E, B, and so on. So it gives you an example of how math works. And I would encourage uh, you to tell your designers don't develop your own spreadsheet, do it in your own format, make it work for your office, however you want to make it work. We're not going to do the math. We haven't done the math on this one. If you guys choose to do that, in your own campus and want to offer that to a designer, fine. We haven't done it in the designer's manual. So those are kind of um, the information that should provide you with the ability to pay an invoice to the designer. If it doesn't do that, let us know how it doesn't. Give you what you need to do to prove the designer's agreement. And it gets real Nitty gritty, in the end, it's all about making money for the designer, right? And the contractor. Yes, I was going to say, the only, you know, what, what's on the horizon right now is the uh, possibility for a big negotiation policy piece that may. And some of that. Uh, that's not happening yet, but okay. in the future. So, uh, 
Do I need to repeat that for people on, online? Maybe? So, what Alan said was that uh, your, the state architect's office is working on a fee negotiation policy process. And certainly that is the fee fees that incorporate the check fees. And that would be for more like atypical type projects. Okay, or yeah, yeah not your standard project. Okay. And would you guys be developing a, uh, something in the SBC 6, or another SBC 6 document? We'll have to wait and see what impact that has on the SBC 6. Okay. But, I mean, right now the SBC 6 has some latitude for negotiation in it, but it probably needs to be. Out of that. Yeah, make sure it works. Okay. Chapter three is design. Um, well, we have to look at the, the first page of it. Um, as you can see, in B here, it refers to the, the uh, pre A31 pre design conference agenda, and when we get to the uh, Appendix showing the forms. You see that we named the form, gave them a number and a name. Here, A, A forms are agenda forms, P forms are checklist forms, F forms are form forms. So, um, you can see in C there that tells the designer to utilize the meeting agenda forms for each design phase A32, 34, 36, and 38. It's supposed to be great design phase. And then it refers to the design based document checklist. Those are provide you with guidance, guidance on how what documents to produce in each of those phases. And we'll look at those when we get to that appendix. Important uh, note there in IMF on that page, design the project to not exceed the authorized project bid target. So you probably give them the SBC one, you know. Numbers on there that it's going to say higher than the target. That is to stay away from those numbers. Prepare meeting notes. This is where they're supposed to be preparing the meeting notes. Regulatory is on the next page, and uh, we'll get to the regulatory section in the appendix. In the appendix, but uh, the vision zero. But it says applicable codes and regulations are listed in the general conditions of the contract and in 014115 basic regulatory requirements. And it gives information on the State Farm Marshal Office and information on stormwater permits. I know that some people have commented on stormwater permits. Some people have a different status in regard to stormwater permits than others. Uh, this may not be perfect in that regard. Manual. I'm not stupid enough in those processes to work through that. I think Keith mentioned that there's more changes coming. Uh, so that's the problem I'm going to have. One of the uh, sections is in uh, 3.04, talks about high performance building requirements. Dave Pitsy, and it just makes a reference to that. Dave Pitsy, high performance building requirement, HPDR, is the program of the Office of State Architects. Designers shall conform to the Office of State Architects guidance for HPDR provided on the OSA website. So I know that, uh, Alan, there's more being developed on that as well. Yeah, we're, we're expecting uh, the uh, final proposed revision. HPDR in the next couple of weeks. Uh, okay. And we'll put that out uh, for review uh, prior to uh, finalizing it. But it's, it's basically sort of a wrap up of all of our uh, statewide uh, training sessions we did. It's a ministry for those who did pilot projects. Okay. When we get to the uh, Oh, one documents. Let's see if we can have placeholders for those right now. Okay. 
The HBPR, we have that intended section on our website now. Do we just link to OSA's website or should we keep up with the forms and leave them and have them on our website as well? Or just a link to the probably best to just, just, just uh, refer to the OSA website, you know, in a consistent manner that we're doing here with the designers to make themselves. Um, uh, especially when you know, the revisions are finalized in the addition. If there won't be an addition number, it will be just a date on the document reflecting the latest. Uh, we'll show the markups. Uh, showing the changes in red you know, for all of the industry and SBAs to see. So uh, it's probably best just to put it on the site. I think our designers are used to that because that's how we do it now. We refer to the state architect's website. So they, they're they used to going to the state architect's website to get that information and get those forms that they need to meet the requirements. <coughs> Okay, so uh, just to summarize that, uh, practically recommending that you refer to the state architect's website for HPDR documents and process. 3.05 is a uh, section of space efficiency and cost analysis. This is a uh, content that was in the UT, Dyer's Manual, Buckman, PDRs. I encourage you to read through that, and, and each each of the design phases have information about the uh, developing the, the cost estimate information. So that refers to the FICOM uh, process. I'm not an expert in that, but included that in the And then also. UT had a section on furniture, fixture, and equipment um, processes. And I'm sure you can put that in the meetings on the manual. So, this provides you with guidance on what the expectations are for um, FFD additional services, which are often the case in a, maybe in a larger building or new building. <coughs> Chapter 4, if you have your designer's manual and you're looking at chapter 4, page 1, uh, 402 has a typo right there, and I'm just spelling it correctly. You see a typo, would you call it right there? Let us know. Uh, Carl had a thing that I thought was uh, very appropriate. He said, you will always have to fool with you. Carl says you'll always have a typo. So, uh, 2.01, part of uh, paragraph 8. 201? Yep. Thank you. Help me out.
GMP, CMGC processes, documents, and non construction documents. You said that's secondary, so let's try to get this back. Let's try to get all this stuff done. We'll come back probably within, I would say, two months and type those up and drive those. I was told that LTIs probably don't need those immediately, but will need them for sure. CMGC probably won't have a CMGC project in this, this first round of budgets. Is that right? Okay. So, this uh, item one says an inch, a change in the process that we'll look at when we get to the implication bid more. But it says complete the appropriate section in accordance with the owner's specific requirements. Whether it's an invitation bid or a request for GP or an invitation bid on construction, and make the following arrangements. Establish a source for bidders to obtain PDF copies of bidding documents at no cost, and identify the source and the invitation to bid. Any charges for this service should be reviewed with and approved by the owner prior to using the source. Secondly, arrange for bidders obtaining bid documents. Bidding documents from the established source be tracked as bidders of record that will receive a demo. Carl, if you want to add any? Carl did quite a bit of research on this. You know, I, I called several architects and a couple of people that do that, and it seems like everybody else in the whole world already is doing it except us, so it's not like we're plowing new ground here. Uh, but there are services like uh, there are three that, that are used in the Nashville area, and all of them have various forms of, you know, you send in or arrange to get your documents. They will post it. They'll do. They'll do a lot of your work if you want to. They'll send out notices with a list. Somebody has to establish the list, uh, and uh, they'll they'll actually. Uh, Mail out addendas or any updates uh, or anything like that. Yeah. So, so they, we're, we're, we're tasking the designer to go get one of these yeah. tools. Great man, which they've probably already been doing. Yeah. So I don't think it's anything new to them, but it's new to us. <laughs> um, yeah, when we have a project that we don't have a designer, We've been working with our procurement office to kind of um, help them with learning the planning process. And we ran into, I guess, maybe terms and conditions that um, the procurement office, I guess, there's a difference between the construction of design and procurement. And they were researching our, the terms and conditions for those websites to make sure we weren't, I guess, signing up for something that would be under laws from a different state or something which might be something to keep in mind. Or, so we're checking into some of the planners right now to verify that um, we can agree as an SBA and a procurement office can agree to those types of conditions. Right? It was something that just kind of unfolded as so we've been doing projects. So your procurement office wanted to know about the terms and conditions of planners. The planners. For us to or, agree to them. Ownership of documents, what was their concern? No, no, we don't know what their concern was. They, they, they think differently than the procurement office. Another life I have, they, the, the IT office, and this, they, they, well, uh, the IT people would like to know what's in that, and the, and the employee clicks on agree, I agree. Same thing. Yeah. Similar. So, but at the same time, the IT office is trying to tell Microsoft, hey, what happens to this? Okay. So, sometimes they have to change the agreement. Okay, that, those instructions continue on the next page. Communicate to planners the web address and process to access building bidding documents so they can get the same, same way planners. And ensure ensure hard copies of bidding documents are available for non-refundable purchase of bidders' records. 
So Michelle is going to go over to chapter five with all oh, <laughs> Uh, on the next page in chapter four, uh, the general conditions of the contract for construction say very little about it, back, and you omit here, uh, which I think uh, about that's correct. I think it's worth noting the marker general conditions. So you do have the marker uh, document. Vision Zero documents. UT didn't use it in part of the He just said, uh, now here's the general conditions, and there's 50 pages of it. They don't care if we have to put 50 pages. Uh, uh, CBR has had a long history of, hey, we'll save a tree or two, and then the preliminary document, you see the spark that we always find the, the document on the website. So this gives you the option. Now, it gives the designer an option if they want to go ahead and you know, prepare a draft document that includes you know, general conditions, that's fine. They want to just use the marker, draft instead of the project manual, that's fine. So, I don't know if I adequately describe that. Do you have any comments about that? Yeah, we'll see them put the marker in there on preliminary documents and then on the final document. Yeah, the general conditions. And you've got to make sure you check check for that to make sure the general conditions are in there in the yeah. final document. I'll say that we have found it. They don't start the general conditions. We've had designers working for us for so long, they'll start a 1997. Yeah. Just look to make sure they have Yeah, that's uh, maybe one advantage you guys have Start. Uh, Patty steps out, right? Uh, so when she gets back, we'll probably talk about the mission more. Uh, one more group control. Comments about that. I have the same kind of comment. May not quite fit your situation. Let me comment just a bit on, on stormwater. Uh, I understand there's some new regulations that are uh, that are being proposed. Uh, I've had AMAC, our consultant, you know, trying to stay on top of that. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So some because some of you are co-permitted with the city, some of you have your own do your own permitting. Uh, so right now, AMAC, I know it's working with some of you, so you may want to uh, question them about what's going on. They're working with you. Uh, I know some of them, some AMAC's working with some of you on the audit, prepare, preparing for the audit. So just, just try to, to, to get a feel for AMAC on what those changes are going to be and how they affect you uh, individually because almost every LGI is permitted in some different way through the city or independently. So uh, this is something we're, we're probably going to have to look at as we move along uh, how it's going to work for each individual uh, SPA, uh, including TBR and ET. You know, uh, it, it's, it's really a dynamic situation at this point. TBR and ET have sites that have various situations. Well, for follow up on that, Keith, are, are we thinking that uh, you, know, with, you have the regional consultants, you have AMAC Foster as a stormwater consultant, you know, we've posted for consultants and we've got letters of interest and you know, we might wind up in the middle of them, but might not. Is that something that's Statewide, we should maybe consider having one consultant that, that they can assist them across, um, you know, for the LGIs, uh, CPR, and ET, or is it okay to have different consultants working 
you know, but the percent. I'm, I'm hopeful that if you get a consultant, stormwater, even a civil consultant, that they would be up on the necessary permits processes to get those permits. Uh, we can always use, I guess we could always use TBR as kind of a catalyst to do that. I mean, AMAC uh, now Woods, they were AMAC, now they, their new name is Woods. Uh, their contract expires also this September, so I don't know who will have. I don't even know who, who we're going to get. I think uh, I think all of us will kind of we'll have to work together to make sure that what's in the designer's manual and what the requirements are meet everybody's needs. Okay. And it could be at some point that that whole section pulls out and it's unique to individual camps. I, I don't know at this point. It depends on how many forks in the road there are that we're trying to describe in the manual. Uh, it does. It, 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 we don't know that yet because of the regulations that, that are coming out and are not finalized. It is. It's not really regional. It's, it's locality. It's local. It's uh, cities. Uh, the larger cities have their own MS4 permitting requirements. Uh, some of our campuses, such as uh, ETSU and MTSU, are co permitted cities. So the city holds the permit, the overall permit. So it makes it a lot, I think it makes it a little easier. Some of the campuses aren't co permitted. And then we have the community colleges that are in a metro area, like Nashville's in Nashville metro area. So it's really different all over the state, just depending on, on where you are. Uh, what I'm saying is it, it can be unique to each individual location. Uh, so that's what makes it different. Okay, good. Uh, there's the balance of the selected documents for the reference in Chapter 4. Chapter 5 is our construction procurement delivery method. Um, you'll see in, in 501, um, the talk about alternate delivery method, best value option 1, 2, 3, BMGC, and design build. Uh, the UGs and DVRs, and I think streams, streams uh, also, uh, and we just noted that best value. Option two is not going to be used. The same as option, option three and design build. So rather than spend <laughs> you know, paper and, and, and trying to describe the process, we just said get with the owner uh, what, what event happens. And then there's our, there are governing documents that are in, uh, on the OSA website that help you with that process. So, uh, we did comment on the CMGC and the DB1. Okay, I, I didn't uh, highlight there the uh, pre bid conference and agenda, but there's kind of an extensive section that starts 503 on page one, continues top of page three, talks about conducting the pre bid conference. This coupled with the uh, free bid conference agenda document, APC uh, agenda, excuse me, uh, like the A52, uh, can really help provide the, these are the critical communication points. Free bid conference, bid opening, and uh, so those those are worthy of spending some time on and going over those with your designer or Input. 506 is the bid opening. And again, you know, this is we're down to one piece of paper and, and a lot of money riding on it. A lot of uh, decision points. So there's a long process there that starts on page three, goes to page four, five, and six. 
I have a typo that I really need to fix. But you can see, I hope you can see on the bid form, on the bid form, we put in a uh, small type of there, uh, figures prevail, words clarify, but only owner's discretion. So that's a step toward getting it. I mean, it's almost as good as not having words on it. Well, let me see if I can. Right above alternate number one. And right above the bid, base bid, I see. When I, when my typo is when I fix that, uh, this phrase in both words and figures should be in friends also. For this project, for the lump sum of both words and figures. And uh, so we, I need to fix some formatting here. Figures prevail, words are clarified, all this discretion. So that's in, I think we have it. So we have it here uh, for the designer. And then it's on the bid form as well. Okay. 
Okay, I didn't. I want to also call your attention to um, item M, letter M as in uh, drug free workplace affidavits. So when we come to that item, it's a new document that's required with this document. State law that we uh, reviewed with the state architect's office and Submitting for a construction contract with the state to provide a drug free workplace affidavit. We'll talk about that in more detail, but we have a new section here. Do we have a template of the document? Yes. Okay. Ask me notarized. Yes. Yeah. Raise the seal. I didn't say that. We didn't require that. But I don't think the I don't think that's on the law. It's a typo on page uh, last page of chapter five. I have a numbering problem. So I have to get to book five. It shouldn't be five point ten. It should be five point nine and five point ten. Okay, chapter six. I've got sixteen pages. Pre-construction conferences, um, as I said, important communication point, and this talks about referring you to the pre-construction conference agenda. We'll just when we get to that agenda, I'll look at those pages and then uh, on maybe seven or eight pages. So that's um, all right. Maybe I'll take the construction. Yeah, I have to think about the pre-construction conference agenda because this this. This is when you kick off things and you have to set the pace, as you well know. Contract, how, how, what your expectations are, what they're going to have to live by and do. It's all in the documents. And if it's in the documents, that doesn't mean they, they've read it, right? It doesn't mean they understand it. So it's an important time to get together with them. They're old. So there's lots of information in here about uh, how we're going to conduct. Page 
change or completion it's on page 12. We have an agenda for the change or completion meeting. Reference is referred to in item 6. Two. This gets this gets down to finish our up job. Everybody wants to finish. Everybody wants to be hard working. Finish now. So that goes on for quite a lengthy section as well. Using standard F72 certificate stamps and substantial completion, which is what you will stop the pace. And then final inspection. Uh, 621, final inspection meeting, typo there on page 15, which along with section number of the page. Uh, that's One more chapter, it's a short one. Chapter 7, close out the record documents. Final page of contracting. One year corrective inspection. Final payment to the contractor. For the designer certified the final payment, the contractor must correct any deficiencies. Requirements for final payment to a construction contract can be found in the commission. In the section of the advertisement for four final payments, four for that is 78. Yeah, does, this, does this parallel statute more for final payments? Contract for final payments? Statute? Uh, PC policy? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Project yeah. without a bond. Yeah. 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 Everything was a policy. We just were virtual. Right. But I don't remember checking it. It's set up. It's a bond. It's project without a bond that requires the bond protection. Oh, okay. Right. Now we do The ball. Who drank coffee this morning?
the eco side. Yeah. yeah, something like what Diane does on plus what Rilla does plus what, what I do. What Barb Jarnigan used to do. Wait, and, and, and it always comes full circle. Yeah, yeah. Or well, we do like. There anyway without us. I got him through that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, well, I can have Mark do his kind of thing. I can stop the script. I was mine, but however, it's kind of within the whole of my own. He wasn't sure how it was going to go. And I was thinking of how I was going to have my own SAT or a delegation in the SAT. Uh, she was right. um, actually, I was glad that everything is going to be responsible, and I actually find our evaluation mm -hmm. and then I get to gather everything to move out to the evaluator. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm the initial, initial person. I initial before you want to start signing up to make sure that they've uploaded the right documents. And then after I have the initial audience so that we know kind of where so we don't have to check in to see where they are in the picture. At least I know at that point by the middle of the slide that I get back in with our VP and publisher and so then we're kind of like on the phone with the designer or contractor. Hey, here's the thing. Oh, these things are decided. So once okay. it comes back and counts for signatures, it's you know, it's a little bit different. But yeah, um, Mark, he was talking about, um, I mean, I guess part of what my daughter's doing is, and then I told him I was actually thinking about doing kind of an equity, so I can get the sense that it kind of morphs into a formal contract and things like that. It's a little bit different than the initial. Oh, Jim. Thank you. 
permission for them to meet a designer to get permission for the
it's very simple. You can't just take the ice truck. Yeah, I mean, we can look at it here, but basically what you can touch and look at is what you can do. We do have a lot of other utilities. We've deviated so many times. We don't have enough. It's not even the same. It's not 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 the same. Oh, so we if you had one three, we only got a one of the course. We have a couple of rules that we saw in a couple of them. Two to three hundred thousand. They came in with I know it's supposed to be five. Three to five. Three bills. And that's going to get right now. Now next fall, we have a lot of boards. Yeah, I'm right. But what would happen if you go between a lot of them? Yeah. A lot of white process. Yeah. We're too busy to do it. We're still going to want to do it.
and that has allowed us to uh, take the 2007 version, which is the, the TBR version, and do the edit into that version and post it into the AIA contract website. Uh, some of you have sent me an email address for your uh, your user who will represent your sample. Uh, some have not. Uh, when you send me that person, you decide who that is who's going to go online and manage your project uh, creation uh, online in the AI contract cloud. Just send me that person's email, and I will post it, uh, register it with the uh, our license online. Now the way this is going to work is that with the the edit, the, the 2007 TBR version is exactly like version. So nothing has changed there now. Uh, what you will do is you will, uh, in order to stay well with the AIA contract unlimited license, uh, they ask that a project be created for every week of that document or series of documents that you need to use for any given project. That's a, another subject of any other AIA documents you might want to use, but for now it is the 201. 2007 version. I have created a version for your campus to use as you host. Every campus has a version that is dedicated to you. Your campus is you as the owner. Uh, and so that allows us to create a PDF of that contract which can be used with every single project. You should not have to do edits of any kind to the PDF to use the A201. There is a, I emailed the version to you. I didn't find the typo, by the way. So the one with the little extra period and 2.3 or 4, I think one of those sections up there. Uh, and uh, but there was a reference. They ruined were, the project. I ruined the I already messed it up. Thank you. Uh, but so I sent you one that has a little typo in it. So if you want the one without the little typo, there's one sitting. You'll have to go to the cloud. You'll have to go in and go into your campus. Uh, say it. CPU uh, uh, project 1.0, CPSU project 1.0. It's just a single project set up for every one of your uh, campuses for that generic A201 2007 version. So that will get you started. Uh, and what you'll do is you will create a project for every time that you use it. Now that sounds laborious. I asked them, I pressed AIA on the questions about. Uh, you know, do we have to do this since we're not changing it? And we had the answer that it might be. And the response was, no, you must create a project for every time that you use a particular a single document on a project. So you can use other AI documents, you can store them in your project file. Creating a project is very easy. You just say create project, you click, you name the project, you create the file, you put the AI and I would ask, I sent out some set of instructions so that you can use your sort of abbreviated campus name, CSU, 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 uh, and create that, put that at the beginning of the project, and then the SCC number and your project name, I don't know how many letters it will allow, but surely it's enough that you can, you can store it. It should be able to store it anyway. It will not take very long to pull yellow out of projects. So the issue with finding it, I don't know if you will need to uh, at any point necessarily find a particular project once you create it, but we want to make sure that we can do that fairly easily. So uh, if you could follow that uh, that uh, nomenclature for the contact uh, uh, in, in the AI contract So that's the 2007 version. What's happened yesterday? You're creating a project on the GTAC no, cloud? on the AIA contract cloud. The, the other cloud that is for the contract for the designer's manual is a separate cloud location. That's what they have a record every time it's used on the cloud. That's what they have. And it, it seems more, it's, it's pretty easy to do. I mean, you just go and use the document that you use for that. Just clarify the project number. It's our SBA abbreviated yeah. uh, 
LGI and then the SEC number and then the title or just the number? Um, you know, this is for the project name in the AIA contract, so nothing oh, here will oh, change. Oh. So this this is the name of the project in in the AIA document itself is will remain section 07313 of all general work as you say. For for the con for the AIA store one. Okay. The project file in the AIA contract cloud is where you create the code for the AIA. So, so how does a designer access the HUO? Give it to me. It's PDF. It doesn't, it doesn't have the project name, that unique project name in it? Same one. It's the way the board's done it. Here, this is your reference to the project name across the board. We, but we never had to go and right. set up a project, download it, none of that. Right. Now, it's down you, there. Yeah. Post it. Theoretically, you could do that, but then we have to create word documents, and you know, this way it's PDF, and there's no questions saying every time. It, it looks at that. You're going in and. Does, that, does this information, the project name, show up anywhere? Just in the AIA contract file. That's the only place okay. it will be. So it's just your way of being able to find it if you need to go back and reference. If you're using any other documents, you may want to be able to get other documents. I don't make it. I do that much. That follows our, your agreement with the AIA. Right. Your right. license. To be loyal. Uh, so our current effort, as many of you know, uh, AIA is has revised the A201, their 2017 version, and now the team is going forward with revision to the 2017 version using UTs, uh, you know, references to their current document and TBRs, and merging it into a new 2017. The 2007 will expire at the end of October. So we're on a crash course to make the modification me, by around August, September. Uh, the, the one thing that we do need to go through is approval to the architect's office and particularly insurance uh, that we are getting insurance requirements lined up. Uh, there will be revisions also uh, with the um,
question brings up another thought to me, though, that is um, vision control, or vision control. Um, come to a comment to check those things. You'll notice on uh, every document we put a, uh, not a version number, but a month and year. So, be consistent with that. So I have uh they need to talk about when 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 is uh when is May over? <laughs> Fixing these typos is if we're still in May twenty eighteen or are we now no. okay I just tell them as much that but somehow we need to communicate to each other okay there's a change. You should use the July or you should so you need to use the recent most recent one. And the most recent one that he has posted in the cloud. And then we should communicate to you, hey, July for chapter six is out there. Uh, so we haven't come to that that bridge yet, but we we as you all well understand, we need to cross it carefully and make sure we communicate. So one one way that we've done that is we put it in the uh, You'll notice in the cloud uh, file names, there uh, all the files have a date at the end of the file name. So you'll see chapter six, uh, it'll say 2018-05. So, and, and that way also you can sort it by the year and so on. Have a number of them in the same folder. So. That uh, is important for us to work through and process together. And if any hiccups there or potential hiccups, you can call to our attention and say, this would be a better way to communicate that. And I think this working group that you talked about, whatever name it's going to have, will help us with that part. Okay, so uh, the uh, balance of the designer's manual has much of it. It's uh, appendix, appendices. And um, I'm just going to highlight a few things in, in each area and try to go through it. This has been done by 2 o'clock, I think, 4 o'clock, or 4 o'clock? Terrible joke. <laughs> Okay, A31, uh, first document, 
Appendix 1, the agenda, so that's what we need by the A, the vendors, please accept the answer, the forms. So, A31, pre uh, design and conference agenda, establish meet the designer for the first time and go over these are suggested items. Um, the first <laughs> First comment is refers to the SDP 6A standard terms and conditions. So, you know, their their agreement, their agreement terms and conditions are the governing document. And these provide guidance. Um, then we have agendas for program phases, and these are uh, like 832. I'll just mention one. We've got this little box at the top. These are fully editable Word documents that the designer can pull down and revise. You know, things that may not be you know, applicable every time. If you're doing a roofing project, you don't need the soil test, you don't need the space efficiency. You know, all that kind of thing you can talk about or they can modify. Free bid conference agenda is A52. You'll notice in it, uh, it, it also is a editable, fully editable Word document. Here's where we talk about have a new idea that we uh, meet with the, the potential bidders. Uh, we have the drug free workplace. Affidavit is mentioned here. New idea, and just to highlight that, that uh, it's a new process for bidders. Jim, do you, at the beginning of this appendix, do you have a cover sheet that shows the status of the appendix one? My, I guess one of the book that I've got from Ed. Has a, the heading for appendix one. The heading for Appendix One? No, we don't have a header. But you want a header page? Well, I just I just found myself. I, I, I put a standard in line. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I went. You, know, you went from the contract. You went from chapter seven, right into a small 831 on the left hand side, like for wayfinding. I thought it was. Yeah. Something to look at. So maybe a hand page. Or yeah, for the one. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Even maybe increasing the font on A31. Oh, we can do a, We can do a content page too. Of course, on your web side, it all will be listed. If you don't have an appendix, I, I would suggest you have an appendix one header and then the link to the first, you know, what would be the first link to the appendix. Oh, when you turn it over, it goes the other way. So the first link would be A31. So Web page for the wayfinder itself. So there's the, the meeting agendas for each design phase and then three bit conference in that phase. Excuse me, talk about that. E62 is the pre construction conference. I already mentioned that. Um, and this seven pages long. This is where you're going to sit down and say, okay, this is how we're going to run this project. Contractor. And signed up for a state job, you're going to have a state process. There it is. There's one hour and a half to do that. 
Uh, let's look at some of these checklists.
just for bidding. It's to make sure make sure we've met all the requirements. Uh, SBC, state fire marshal, all those requirements for a project ready to bid. Okay, so um, another back on P forty two. These letters, abbreviations, or stands for G stands for general or all types of projects. Units for um, traditional lump sum bidding projects. C for CMTC project trade bids. D for best value projects. C for uh, basic commission. <coughs> Talked about stormwater a couple times. Um, project closeout checklist. Also helps you helps the project manager uh, see that everything is there and tell the designer to got this completed and we're ready to start our project closer. Designer's cost testing is the F thirty two. I think that is a smart I think that's simply an Excel document. Calculations. In the bid tab, uh, I like what Jerry Preston said about the bid tab. Bid, use of the bid tab is kind of an IQ test. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it involves forms that you break it down to make sense. So there's a different, a couple of different tabs on the Excel document. Uh, I don't know how to this one. I think the second tab is allows you to print on two pages. You um, have a lot of bidders. So two designers, they want to submit this and do something else with it. They want their own process, whatever they want to do. This has the basic components to it. And we added to it. Um, so there's this check check boxes there for the time statement, addendum, acknowledgement, whether they have bid security, uh, whether they have submitted unit prices for the required, and then the drug affidavit. So there's the drug affidavit check box now that's added to the bid set. The columns that want to check out. Got a place for the base bid and up to four officers. Now you may be, you don't have any officers. They want to keep those columns short and form. Okay. Hey, Phil, one comment back to the, the, bid, the uh, designer's cost estimate at F32, which I believe is our F388. Yeah. It's kind of a, it, it, it's really a summary form. Right. You know, at, at Design development, we expect the designer to do a more detailed estimate than just presenting this form. It's more of a summary form in that respect. And CDs, yeah. obviously, this is a is a good form to, to summarize you know, yeah. the reconciliation. Uh, so uh, the the intensity, expectation is this is all I need. Right. The intensity of the designer's estimate is in the terms and conditions of agreement. Uh, so this is just a form. That they okay. can use to summarize. Okay. Well, they kind of, kind of structure in the cell when the designer, this is the level of uh, At a summary level, the, the individual phases. At the individual phases, though, it may be less or more detail. Right. Our designers, most of our designers who work with us know how to do this. We haven't had any challenges, but do expect a more detailed estimate at design development than what you would see on this form. I was going to pull it up 
What number is it? Does it have? Got 32. It, it might be helpful if we recall this. I would expect we want a lot more information, especially on things like HVAC, um, electrical, and so on. I think it'd be helpful to add summary on here. Good time. We're, we're yeah. going to ask for a lot more supporting documentation yeah. than what they would just post here, especially on the HVAC side. Maybe we're quite back to that with some range. Where's my print? I don't want them to think that this is this satisfies the uh, cost of word add word summary at the end, or just take an estimate with design cost summary. Well, it should it should match the bottom line to match. <laughs> sure. So there's a typo at the bottom of it. And there last email. On that doc. At the bottom, where it says T and R. Oh, So here's where it says getting uh, documents in PDF format may be obtained at no cost from the following source. So the limitation here, and that's where you insert the word filling documents that you can provide and take, download the word document as uh, all the text is protected except for parts that they need to fill in. Instructions to bidders um, now includes information on the uh, drug free workplace affidavit requirement. If bidders with five or more employees are required by PCA, Social Code Code, to submit a completed section of the Code drug free workplace affidavit. That's a good idea. Document number since it wasn't in the F, the A, C, or F form. Is it in the 
Instructions in chapter 7, that is one of those things. Determine whether any of the following circumstances apply. Contractor is $100,000 or less. Right, that's a non The general contractor has been a player in the fall. If that any that means you got this. surety has been required to assume an active role in the completion process, surely no. The only representative is charged with administration and they have in their judgment sufficient that if you have reason. Okay, I've got a lot of subs calling me. Right. And not getting paid. Then it says, so that I want to determine if any of those conditions exist. Then two, if they do, the signer shall let them know. Does that help? Yeah, it's just statute. Do they, and yeah. if it is, it, where's the stipulate the ad? Because, because uh, those legal notices are not cheap. And no. the $100,000 or less, that's a lot of, that's a lot of advertising. Right. So it becomes it becomes onerous, especially the hundred thousand dollars. Under the hundred thousand dollars. All right. Is there any way of us being able to be well, like no, legal? It's just a contract. Hundred thousand dollars, and the contract therefore has no choice. Right. But, but that's, that's, a of of that's a lot of drive. That's a lot of drive. Okay. I don't see any way around it. I can I can find some references. For well, it. I mean, if we can advertise on purchasing website or our website, OSA's website, rather, like than, a legal a, rather than a legal notice. Hmm. We'll okay. see if we can find the statute. Yeah. Maybe the contractors and the subs would be used to kind of go into our website looking for that instead of going to a newspaper. Well, no, it's on the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. Newspaper of record. Yeah, yeah that's the county, right? That's the statute. I, I'm not sure what the statute says. Okay. We'll, we'll research statute. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it does. That's right. Yeah. And that may predate the internet. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, it does say that. Where's that? If you follow two on out, two B, oh, okay. it says when to do it. I think this is just practice that we have. I'm not sure if it's practice. Well, the practice was driven by the statute, so we'll just have to look up the statute. Yeah. One way around is just bond everything. 
I think that's statute too. Yeah, well, I think that's in the statute too. You don't have to have a bond. Not for every thousand below. Right. That's what I mean. A hundred thousand below is bond. I think that's a statute. It's not required. Good question, Mark. So the contractors have to write the statute, obviously.
and the language that's in there in case there are any questions. So you do need to use both of the supplemental provisions. Sure. Would it be possible to, um, at the very end of this, we've got the owner, owner information. Would it be possible to create owner supplementary condition 7301 or 73 for consistency? Well, because the, uh, it modifies the general conditions for things that we, that the campus would like to have. They usually operational things. Um, usually, we have a, uh, I don't think we see your PBRs, but we have a specific campus thing to handle that with the construction design of the contract. Uh, they, they wouldn't change. They, rarely, uh, they, Basically, be uh, things that getting keys, um, access to site, that kind of thing. I guess it's a question of when you cross the line from contractual requirements to management requirements. Right. Those, those are kind of blurred. They, they can be. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, I mean, right. but, but one, one thing that's not blurred is like two cars. <laughs> so the boss, the boss says, you know, one of those requirements. There is a section called temporary facility and controls. Uh, that may, that may serve you, Mark. Uh, let me come see if I come to it. Uh, at 015000, I think it has a time of latitude there. And to, um, talks about. Right. You have vermin control, water, snow control. I think there was an there's some administrative requirements from well, maybe that one fits. There's a there's a there's a section for uh, owner coordination too. Not in here, but it exists. Yeah, uh, administrative laws. I didn't know the thinking. It's fine. There's, you know, there are yeah. workarounds. Um, right. I think we were still debating whether to include this as far as administrative requirements. General requirements. Temporary parking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's pretty it's operational. Any reason why, after the general conditions are modified or have been modified and talked up as they are, any reason why all of these supplementary conditions for all those different sections were not incorporated into the general conditions so that would have to take out some of these extra supplementary conditions if they were all inclusive in the general conditions? That's where we're going. 2017. Okay. So the uh, what we're saying is, can we on the uh, OO seventy three sixteen will be done away with those will be incorporated. Same for forty three. Same for not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the preference is that we insert our own spec section for say owner coordination or owner preferences for the back one, and not to not to do supplementary. Right. I think you have Appendix 3 to work with. Well, that's, I think that's what Mark said. Appendix 3 is part of it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
maybe some changes that we do for how we wrote those, but I don't think it was just a major. Guy I grew up under didn't like allowances, so we just tried to avoid it. I think we were trying to get paid. There was some allowances I should have highlighted. Gives you complete latitude with the work filling form. I can lift it up and list it out. Same with the price, but the price of the process is 2213, and then the list of the price is there. And Table, Jim, yeah. I can tell you we don't like allowances, unit prices, or all expenses. Or all phases. <laughs> <or phases. laughs> because, like because the bidders get confused. Yeah. If the more complicated you make yeah. the, the bid form and the bid process, yeah. the, the more likely is the more likely there are to be errors in, in the bidding. Right. You know, what happens, but budget is tight, you're not sure you're going to make it, time is tight, you know, and all of it. They'd say we didn't do it. <laughs> but it does create a level of complexity for, for the bidders. They have to be really diligent in how they, they read the document so that they get the bidding process right for those particular items. So this, this is important. Fill out carefully your review and approval. Contract modification procedures, very important. Supporting documentation, proposals of claims, the purchases of the form for price summary, the form for the price of work, and the form for the price of time, which you can also here and they are some documents. Math embedded with TBR generated documents. These are protected documents, protected with cell phones, so they can't mess with some parts that you can't, shouldn't mess with. If you see any problems with how it's calculating or with the, how it's formatted, um, let us know. I've got the password. Not that you don't want TBR documents, but most of them are. I'll say clearly, I can't answer. Schedule of values, progress payment procedures, schedule of values, uh, document says, uh, the form of the schedule of values shall be the AIA document B703 continuation sheet. Then it goes on to say how to create, how to use it. Progress payment procedures has a nice table in it that tells um, what to do with the counterpart and property, progress payments, reducing the changes on substantial completion final payments, what, what documents are required, and has inspections for those. So, the CBR did a nice job putting this together, basically, for following, including where to put the staples. Okay, so we tried to uh, restructure the basic or structure the basic regulatory requirements to again like like in other areas we try to refer to the the regulating agency webpage and just summarize it. So you can see uh, 101B1, or well, 101B, it says the following is a list of major codes that may govern the project and not to be considered all inclusive. Snyder has, you know, they're, they're duty bound and you think it's according to the code. Let's give some of the guidance. So currently, it's top about codes that. Public commerce, insurance, state farm, medical, 
Code of Code Enforcement Section Office's website, the AQI, all those codes. Building code. So we don't try to say IBC. We say let's let's uh, say uh, code enforcement section say IBC. That make sense. Close out procedures. We talked about that in the uh, chapter. The instructions to the contractor from one from one seven seven seven. Close out the middle. Looking at uh, the data binders. All in. All in. Data binders. Project data binders. Contractors part of the very notes. A lot of commissioning sections starting. The HDBR is going to be at 
get in a situation where you get into the, to the worst case scenario, scenario is that control the source, which are that we're got only one way to get it, one way to one guy affect it. And uh, uh, we, you know, the Joint Commission approved those before, but they've got to have a good site presentation to keep it So, you know, we've got our sole source proprietary uh, form on our web to go to you. Uh, and that is typically uh, filled out by the SBA with a letter from the designer stipulating that they've done the research and the supplies and all this. And uh, we've got a cost analysis inspection that uh, presentation there on there. So uh, a lot of times, if you got a situation like that, Call me, talk to me about it, and you know, I can uh, work with you. And sometimes, you know, the due diligence of having to say that you make it sole source, but you know, there may be somebody out there who can provide. So sometimes it's in our best interest to put in language such as uh, for free people, you know, uh, but with a tight spec and say maybe there is somebody out there that, you know, it kind of satisfies the building commission. Is that you're allowing competition to happen, but somebody can't beat it, so they're out. Sometimes you end up, 90% of the time, with the team of That's all I've got. That's the rest of all my time, too. Go back one slide. Sure. A lot better than four o'clock. <laughs> I couldn't last before. <laughs> you all have been very patient. Uh, Stand in there. I'll be good grades. The certificate of completion will be at the door. It's still out. For CEUs. Okay. Okay. Uh, just Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no.